Starship 24 hits the deck with Raptor Breath, Booster 9 is on deck, Space Nerds question Elon's commitment to Mars, Falcon has a pair of balls, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Last Friday, we went over Booster 7's departure from the Starbase launch site and returned to the high bay, leaving behind its upper half, Starship 24, on suborbital pad B. It wasn't certain if the next big event would be Booster 9's relocation to the launch site or the recommencing of testing for S-24, but after receiving a new Raptor engine and improvements to its structure, 24 conducted another static fire on Thursday afternoon with just enough propellant to light up that single Raptor for about 6 seconds. SpaceX providing a unique aerial view of the satisfying symmetrical blast. But the day's events weren't over yet. Moments later, B-9 was moved out of High Bay 2 and down Highway 4 to the orbital launch pad for its own upcoming series of stress tests. And just last night, S-26's top half was stacked onto its lower half in High Bay 1, what is expected to be SpaceX's first tanker for orbital refueling tests. The company has a contract to fulfill with NASA for that. Washington Post reporter Christian Davenport tweeted that NASA's Pam Melroy stated at the Secure World Foundation on Monday that the Starship program was making good progress. Quote, they're beyond the, we're probably going to blow up the pad phase, and added that safety is everything to the FAA and SpaceX is probably just experiencing some of those things. Yeah, no shit. As Elon continues to focus on building up Twitter to protect free speech and pretty much American society in general, given the illegal government overreach and influence on our elections that has now been proven via the released Twitter files, Tesla investors are busy bitching about money because Elon has sold more of his shares so he can afford to fight for we the people, and woke space nerds are scared he's distracted and his actions are negatively affecting the Starship program. Meanwhile, me, both an obvious SpaceX fan, but also an owner of Tesla stock, am just sitting here laughing to myself. Over the years, these derps didn't want to hear about politics, because while they'll listen to NASA's view equity nonsense all day, they hate differing opinions. And of course, ignorance is bliss. Until it isn't. Long before Elon first tweeted the term, woke mind virus, I warned how wokeism was a threat to SpaceX in their mission to colonize Mars. Something many couldn't wrap their head around until the FAA's public comments last year, and suddenly, some heard those who are infected rage about how the Starship program should be shut down due to environmental racism. But there are still plenty of woke zombies struggling to understand how important it is that the only nation in history to put men on the moon holds fast to its values and fundamental freedoms. Elon understands this. He understands this fight is worth the sacrifices he is making. Because without a mass awakening away from Zeke thought, society doesn't stand a chance. You won't be going to Mars. Humanity's window of opportunity, Elon's words, to become multiplanetary could slam shut. Now, of course, anyone and everyone is allowed to disagree and even get angry with what I'm saying. So go right ahead. Let your feels fly in the comments below. But ironically, those raging and seething through their keyboards will be those same people who don't appreciate free speech for others, and the war currently being waged on Twitter, because the woke mind virus blinds them. Anyway, as the only conservative voice in this genre, I felt this needed to be addressed. In the wee hours of Sunday morning, SpaceX launched iSpace's lunar lander from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral atop a Falcon 9 booster for its fifth flight, once again putting on an aesthetically pleasing show during its boost back burn to the coast and landing without issue on landing zone two. As Falcon 9 touches down for landing with this incredible view here. Terminal orbit insertion. Page one landing leg deploy. Page one landing confirmed. The lander separated from the second stage about 47 minutes after liftoff. JPL's lunar flashlight was deployed about five minutes later as well. Hakuto R will attempt its touchdown on the surface of the moon in about four and a half months. This morning, SpaceX launched NASA's SWAT mission, which stands for Surface Water and Ocean Topography, to low Earth orbit. Falcon 9 lifted off from Vandenberg Space Force Base, California, surprisingly void of fog at quarter till four local time. This was the sixth flight for this particular first stage booster, landing successfully back at LZ-4 on the west coast. The sat was deployed into low Earth orbit about 45 minutes later. But the party ain't over yet, Holmes. Until last night, two more Falcon missions were scheduled to launch just minutes apart from Florida's coast this afternoon, 
that would be Friday, first carrying two broadband internet satellites, then a flock of Starlink sats, but the latter Starlink mission was pushed to Saturday. If you'd like a viewing buddy for today's Empower mission, I'll be going live for it at a quarter after four Eastern time. Subscribe and become one of us. Just a little bit more news on Starlink here. SpaceX was in Qatar for soccer semifinals, yes, it's pronounced soccer, to demo Starlink for attendees in the area. The company also teamed up with Qatar Airlines and FIFA to fly two World Cup balls. No, not to orbit, you sillies. But to space on a Falcon first stage, where they were then flown to a stadium in Doha and handed off to cup officials who I'm sure wouldn't let anyone else play with their space balls. Okay, really quick, let's talk about preparedness. Christmas is right around the corner, and yesterday stocks tumbled right along with retail sales. And if that's not a sign for a solid economy, you also have Jeffy Bezos, you know, the Amazon guy, telling everyone to save their money for the hurt that's coming. His nemesis, the Elon, tweeting his own concern for a severe recession ahead. And more Americans are being left with the choice of either staying warm or staying alive as energy and food prices continue to climb. But the worst part, beside the lockdowns permanently closing every big boy in my area, is that the one big boy we can go to in the lawyer wife's hometown doesn't even have big boys to sell anymore. Stupid meat shortages. And now it's gone and I hate everything. Luckily, as the chaos continues, my Patriot Supply has our six. Go to preparewithspace.com and order emergency food supplies for you and your family this holiday season. Just look at all the, just look at all the food you get with their three month kit. Let's see, we got, we got bread, we got chili mac, mmm, delish, mac and cheese, Skittles, no, that's Sketty, some white stuff, and mashed taters, precious. Potatoes. Each kit provides one person with over 2,000 calories per day and comes in solid storage containers so you can keep them stashed away out of sight and out of mind until the apocalypse or the wife tries to make you go on a diet, whatever comes first. The $250 deal is over, but there's still time to get every three month kit you purchase for $200 off. Preparewithspace.com, link below. But now it's time for today's honorable mention. This week around 9.30 in the Pacific morning, NASA's Orion spacecraft, which had just spent the past 25 and a half days going to the moon and back, entered the Earth's atmosphere traveling almost 25,000 miles per hour, rolling to dip in and out to ablate speed and heat. Once in free fall, passing 25,000 feet, the capsule pop drug shoots bra, bra, which were then cut to make way for the pilots to pull out the three mains, allowing for a soft 20 mile per hour splashdown off the Baja California coast. NASA quoting their associate administrator for the Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate, Jim Free, on their website, quote, with Orion safely returned to Earth, we can begin to see our next mission on the horizon, which will fly crew to the moon for the first time as part of the next era of exploration. This begins our path to a regular cadence of missions and a sustained human presence at the moon for scientific discovery and to prepare for human missions to Mars. Well, that's all for this week. Thanks for stopping by. Huge shout out to everyone supporting the channel through our locals page. There's a link provided below for others who may wish to do the same. Do make the weekend a nominal one. And until next Friday, Godspeed. <laughs>